Well, everyone, and peace of Christ, all of you, please invite your friends and let us have a good time together today learning something new. It is the old thing, but new learning. Uh, today, the Muslims are celebrating uh, what is called Al Adha. And the fact that Muslims, uh, all their celebration is called Al Adha. Yes, they give it a different name, but Adha means sacrificing, sacrificing blood. And here you ask yourself, why they have a day it's called sacrificing blood and they sacrifice blood to whom in ramadan they sacrifice blood now they sacrifice blood all is adha <clears throat> but muslim they say to us that only pagans they sacrifice blood to god actually there's tons of articles speaking about this which i find hilarious you will find the Muslims saying that we don't sacrifice blood to be forgiven. There's tons of hadith, reference, speaking about you. If you sacrifice, Allah forgive your sin. And this is the whole point of this, uh, supposed uh, the holiday you're practicing now, that you go around the stone, you kiss the stone. Uh, by the way, you are not pagan if you are a Muslim kissing a stone. I mean, obviously, paganism has nothing to do with kissing stones. And then, if you believe that the stone will suck your sin and clear you from sin, that's not paganism. That's not. And then, if you believe that if you sacrifice animals to God, uh, and you have to shed blood, I mean, okay, you know, uh, let me see if I can find articles. I was going to talk about a uh, comment, by the way, but as long today, uh, this is organized supposedly for two days ago, but we changed the date. This is the way the topic different from the title. <clears throat> uh, okay, let's see. Uh, just to show you how most they fabricate stories. I'm going to do a little search in Google. <clears throat> and I will open the first website appear in my search. Here we go. We found, uh, <clears throat> actually, it's called uh, About Islam about Islam and they vote for you right away a bunch of sheep and the title is is a blood sacrifice animals to forgive sins okay let us see answer uh, <clears throat> Muslims sacrifice uh, animal uh, to commemorate the event that happened to a prophet Abraham peace be upon him Prophet Abraham submitted his will to Allah. His son did too when he was about to slaughter. <coughs> All right. Uh, his son. Okay. And then the point of the whole event is not the animal itself or its meat or blood, <coughs> but rather God. Okay. So they are saying the answer no to make it simple. The answer, no. Mm -hmm. Who is a Muslim would agree with this? That the answer is no, it's just about Abraham. Anyone? <clears throat> Anyone? Who is a Muslim in the chat? Please invite your friends, you know. Uh, <clears throat> if you are a Muslim, please let me know. <clears throat> you see, always in here on our channel, we say Muslims can call us for a very simple reason. Because we want you to hear the other side of the story. You know, like Muslims, they go on their channel and they start bashing Christianity and they fabricate tons of things. 
here we give a chance to the Muhammadan to prove himself against what we say. All right? Any Muslim want to say anything? <clears throat> Anyone? Let us go then, as long as there is no Muhammadan, he object my statement that this is absolutely a fabrication. Let us go to the Quran. You will see that the pagan Muhammad, he made sacrificing as a way to get approval from God. And this is the point of the sacrifice for the pagans. <clears throat> you sacrifice something and the God, he approved the sacrifice. I'm not sure how many, uh, uh, how many of you remember the story of uh, uh, Adam and his children. Many of those who live in Asia, in, where is the Muslim population, they hear the word Qurban, Qurban. But did they ask himself, where is the word Qurban coming from? I mean, what Qurban? Qurban. Look how many time appear in the Quran. Qurban is a requirement from Allah to approve, to forgive, and to tell you what he want. So why the Muslims they say something is not true and their Quran proven them to be false. Let us read the story of Adam and his children. <clears throat> Which has find that the story here is kind of hilarious. The Quran as you know is a book suffering from imputation legs are lost, arms are lost, the story is lost, and I think this is due to a huge number of the verses of the Quran been eaten by the goats, or which ate the Quran in the house of Aisha, or eaten by Muslims. Because if you read here, <clears throat> I mean, you tell me, what this story here have to do with this story here? Just the verse before it. This is about Moses and his people. And then suddenly he go and he speak about Adam children. Hmm? And then he say, recite to them the truth of the story of the two sons of Adam. Behold, they each presented sacrifice to Allah. Hold on. I thought that the sacrifice is not to Allah to forgive your sin, right? Okay, so what you sacrifice for what reason? Who is the one who established the culture of sacrificing according to Islam? Any Muslim can tell me? <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim can tell us? Who is the one who started the culture of sacrificing? You see the Muslim they say Christianity is paganism, Jesus is sacrificing himself. You see there is difference between sacrificing yourself and sacrificing somebody. Jesus, he knew what they do. He knew what they do. He knew the future. And he did not change the future. And there is many reasons for that. Christ, he showed us his love. He showed us his bravery. He showed us he is not a coward like Isa in the Quran who ran away and asked somebody else to die for him. He shows us that he will die for us. We don't we don't need to die for him. He shows us that he is the opposite of every culture and every belief in the world. Where you, as you say, 
you sacrifice your son to the God, but Jesus, he sacrificed himself to you. So it's the opposite of what pagan believe. But here we notice, <clears throat> I look not well. You are talking to me? Why do you see my face? <laughs> anyway, no, don't worry. I look very well. I just woke up from uh, uh, sleeping and uh, I have this little coffee in front of me. I look no well. Mm -hmm. So, what is the story of the sons of Adam giving sacrifice to Allah? Who is a Muslim want to help us? Any Muslim want to help us? Who is a Muslim? There is no way we have like all those hundreds of people listening and there is not a single Muslim he can tell us what happened. Sacrifice, he did the first sacrifice, not according to Muslim, the, for the Muslims, they have a story about Adam and Allah, he told Adam to tell his children to sacrifice to their God. And the story, by the way, it's super funny. If I tell you the story, what behind uh, sacrifice of Adam, children, you will not believe it. According to Muslims, Eve, the wife of Adam, she gave birth to two daughters. She used to give birth to twin each time. And then one twin, the daughter was, uh, she have uh, cross eyes, cross eyes. And Adam used to marry this twin daughter to other twin boy. Make supposed to that make different. I mean, this is very silly. It's stupid. You know, this is the garbage of, of Muhammad. So when he gave birth to two twin, one boy, each, each time the twin is one boy, one girl, one boy, one girl. One of them, she have a cross eyes. Now the both the brothers, they don't want to marry the cross eyes women or girl. So Allah told Adam, tell each one of them to give me sacrifice. And the one who I accept sacrifice, he get the woman which was no eyes, cross eyes. True story. I mean, obviously, it's a genius, the one who come with this story. <clears throat> hmm. uh, we have some people trying to change the topic but it doesn't matter to do some spanking from time to time we have a person here he is named you see I, I like those people who uh, we speak about something and they switch the topic right away Sanka the one CP claims his Jesus love everybody, including Hindus and Buddhas, as called them, and after that he attacked Hindus for scolds Hindu. What a hypocrite. <laughs> My friend, I don't know if you go to China or you've ever been in China or not, but don't go there because you will find a big example about you in their culture. It says, he left as a donkey, he never came back as a horse. Jesus himself, he told those who they are Jews, not Hindus, hypocrites, son of servant. Are you better than the Jews who worship the true God? So if you are a hypocrite, I will call you a hypocrite. If you are a donkey, I will call you a donkey. And actually, I take it back, you are not a donkey. If you add sad guru, ask him, he will say to you, no, you are not a donkey, because obviously you do not know Christianity at all. So your guru, he will say to you, you are not even a mule. So loving somebody is by rebuking him when he is doing wrong, not by saying to him, go and take drugs and smoke hashish. You are a very stupid, shallow person. We go back to our topic. We go to the bigger donkey, Muhammad. Recite to them the truth of the story of the two sons of Adam. Behold, they presented sacrifice to Allah. 
Muslims, who is the one can tell us how in the world even we can understand this story? You see, the Quran is so stupid to the point you get more confused after reading it from before reading it. So now I am reading Quran. Hmm? And I start reading this verse and then the verse after it. The verse after it says, Oh, here it says, and Allah accept the sacrifice of those are righteous. Do you see it? Allah accept sacrifice of those who they are righteous. And here you see the story how stupid it is. Because both are brothers, until now they are not committing any sin. So why one of them is righteous and the other one is not? And what they did, this is the first human beings in the earth. They stole TV, what they did. Anyone can tell me what is the righteous, the bad thing he did, the other uh, brother. This is before he killed his brother. I can say, uh, after he killed his brother, he became not a righteous man. But before that, same time, we go to the second verse, we find that there is no story. If you try to stretch my hand again, uh, your hand against me to slay me, it's not for me to stretch my hand against thee to slay thee, for I do fear Allah. Look at this. So, if you fear Allah, you will not kill. So, how Muhammad was slaughtering people left or right? You see the contradiction of the ideology? Because here you feel like, okay, this is a philosopher saying to us that the one who killed is not righteous but all of Islam is based on killing and stealing and kidnapping taking churches right now the Muslims they are uh, praying in our churches in the Middle East starting from Hagia Sophia all the way to, to Cairo all the, uh, to Egypt all the way to Syria all the way to Baghdad all those churches those are churches the, the Muslims they are taking them as mosques big and huge churches so beautiful theft and criminals cult so when you read this, you ask yourself, what righteousness and what not righteousness? And then, for me, I intended to let thee draw on thee self my sin, as well as thine. What does that mean? The translation is very weird too. <clears throat> Can you hear your voice in the mark? What's wrong with my... Okay, I, I think you need to hire your speakers. All right. Nothing changed in my mic since I bought the microphone. So I think it's from your side. And don't uh, please change my topic asking me to explain the prophecy. We, we can, you know, finish topic and then you can ask me questions. So what this story is about? The story here proving to us that Islam is a fraud. Because Allah, he will not approve anything you do unless you provide sacrifice and Allah will accept the sacrifice from the righteous. Who said that? The Quran. Did that happen to Muhammad? In other way, did the Arab and the Jews ask Muhammad, give sacrifice, as Allah said in the Quran? If you go right now, go to the yellow pages of Muhammad, We find them asking Muhammad to do what the Quran said. Chapter 3, verse 138. They also said, Allah took our promise not to believe in any, in any messenger unless he showed a sacrifice consumed by fire between two brackets from heaven. 
What did Muhammad say to them? He said, okay, I will do it. No. Did he do it? No. He said, say, they came to you messenger before me. They are come to you messenger before me with the clear signs. And even with that, you ask for, why then did you slay them if ye speak the truth? And here you see the fraud Muhammad getting busted. He is the one who taught us that if you want, if you are a righteous man and you want to prove or receive an approval of you being righteous, you give sacrifice. So what Muhammad will lose or what is going to take him? Sacrifice a sheep. And then the sheep will be taken by fire. If we go and read the story here about Adam, children, we will find the following. <clears throat> if any Muslim have any anything to say, he object what we say, please let us know. You know, I understand your disability of refuting us. So chapter 5, verse number 27. And as you see here, we don't give interpretation for anything according to us. We give it as the Muslim believe in it for centuries and centuries. And here you will see that yes, there is a fire came from the sky and ate the sacrifice. Who is this fire? Any Muslim can tell us? What this fire? Fire coming from the sky to eat. The story here with us. Exposing many things. Actually, here the story doesn't show anything about uh, about the cross eyes. We need to read another interpretation to see what is behind the uh, you know where it says the cross eyes. So you need to search. Let us see. Maybe we can find it. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, let us see here. Here you see the Muslim, they make try to make it nicer in the translation, but this is not a true story. It says here, Adam, read carefully with me. They also say that every pregnancy, Adam was given a twin, a male and a female. And he used to give the male of one twin to the to the to the female of the uh, one twin to the female of other twin. I mean, this is how stupid this Islam is. I mean, it doesn't make a difference, really. Both are sisters anyway. I mean, look at the stupid. Supposedly, Adam is conservative. You know, I'm not going to give the uh, the sister for the same twin to have sex with her. I will give him uh, the other twin. I mean, do you see the genius? Like supposedly now we fix it. Like I'm not going to do that. But what? What the friend is going to make? Aren't they both sisters? Hmm? No brother. Haram brother. Haram brother. We cannot marry this twin brother to uh, you know to the same twin brother. We have to give it to the other twin brother. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Brother Sitter, we are Muslim and we are very conservative. Our Prophet is very conservative. As an example, he ordered a woman to wear burqa, but he ordered a woman to give her boobs to a stranger. Yeah, is that okay? So she wear burqa, but she gave her boobs to a stranger. How does that make you conservative? First of all, Christian friends, you are stupid. You don't speak good English. You don't speak good Arabic. You don't speak good English. It is two words. Conservative. Uh, okay. Well, what that make it? I'm I'm getting confused. Exactly. Allah wants us to be confused. For He is the God of confusion. Actually, the other God in the Hindu language they call Allah Confucius. This is coming from the word confusing. Well, Confucius is from the word confusing. Exactly. 
and I'm going to explain to you. Aren't you confused now? Yeah. I am confused too. Okay. We need two more people and we can play cards. Because now we need four people confused. Any volunteer? Hmm. Dakar Naik explained to us the philosophy of Allah. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So the story continues in marriage. Habil's sister was not beautiful. You see here they, they took the story off. It's about Havil's sister. She have a cross eyes. And Kabil's sister was beautiful. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh mommy. Oh mommy, mommy blue. Oh mommy blue. The two sisters. Oh mommy. So one sister is not good looking. The other sister is good looking. And now the two boys fighting to get the one sister. You know, Muhammad is not only a fraud. He is the biggest fraud in history. He collects stories, fiction stories, and he read in part of his Quran. I don't know how many, uh, you need to be somebody have little knowledge, you know, study very well. You will find that Muhammad, he come with an idea. Uh, which is proving to us that he is a fraud. Let us see. <clears throat> you know, uh, Muhammad is the same as an idiot. He cannot keep his mouth shut. Let us find the hadith. <clears throat> According to Muhammad, Eve each time she gave birth Her son died. And the story I'm going to show you, it's proven to us that Muhammad is a big fraud, comparing the story to the story in the Quran. Read carefully. The Prophet S A W S A O O O O O M G Mercedes Benz, he said, when Hawa Hawa is Eve. I mean the translation is hilarious. I mean they translate everything. And by the way, here they say it is the if. They say it's the if. Hmm? But the fact it is Hassan. Hassan and Gharib. But anyway, the story mentioned by Muhammad. The Prophet said when Hawa became a pregnant, pregnant, Iblis came to her and her children would not live after birth. So he said. Name him Abdul Harith. So she named him Abdul Harith. And he lived. So that is among the righteous. Sorry, the inspiration of Shaitan and his command. Okay. But based on this story, Adam was not giving birth. His wife, she was giving birth to twin as, as Muhammad claimed and the first child of Adam which lived it's not the one mentioned in the Quran it is Abdul Harith Abdul Harith means the slave of Shaitan Harith is one of the name of Satan can you believe it then we go here we notice that the story 
as usual of Muhammad doesn't match with the story of Muhammad as usual here we see a prophet giving twin and now he want to marry the sister of one twin to the other twin and now the two boys are fighting over the sister who have no cross eyes resulting in Qabil waiting for her for himself instead of his brother Adam refused unless both offer a sacrifice now you ask the Muslims, okay, how, wh who taught Adam to do sacrifice? I mean, wh what this idea? This is the first man. <laughs> this is the first man. He never witnessed sacrifice. So why he is, uh, Allah, he's, uh, you know, told him. And who his sacrifice was accepted would marry Kabil's sister. So the idea is, both of you, you give sacrifice. Allah will accept the sacrifice. And by accepting the sacrifice of the person, that person will marry the daughter, which have no cross eyes. And the idea of having a cross eyes with a female, I mean, this is... Uh, let us say for the sake of argument, a woman, she have a cross eyes. <laughs> I mean, the start of a human being a crimes is because of a woman cross eyes. Not cross breast. Not cross lips, it's across eyes. I mean, do you see the problem? If we ask Zach and Naik, exactly, what do you say about this story? Zach and Naik, for sure, he would be so excited. He said, No. He said, Christian Breath, be honest. If now we give you to women, and women of them, they have a cross eyes, and then the women, you don't have a cross eyes. Which one you are going to accept? I say Abdul. Why I don't take both? I am a Muslim. I take can take four. <laughs> oh boy, stupidity is amazing. Why we have only nine hundred thirty-five people? Come on, we are talking about cross-eyed women. You see, first of all, Muslim they say. Everything happened by the plan of Allah. Everything happened by the plan of Allah. Even when you commit adultery, it's Allah order. Even when you kill, It is the order of Allah. Allah, He forced you to kill. Anything you do, sin or not sin, it is Allah making you do it. And the Quran is full of verses proving what we are saying. And all those verses are hilarious, as usual. As an example, in chapter of Ali Amran, it says, it's not for us any soul to die except by Allah where he wrote the destiny for this soul so if if this guy he called his he, he killed his brother he killed him by the will of Allah if we go to the yellow page of Muhammad we will find here <coughs> Let us find the verse. All right. Chapter 3, verse 145. Nor can a soul die except by Allah leave. And do to what? Do to a fixed writing fixed as by writing writing here is the destiny Allah he wrote your destiny so if the two brothers fighting this is due to the fixed writing if one brother he killed the other brother this is the fixed writing of destiny made by Allah do you see it any Muslim have an objection so here we notice 
that the idea of righteousness and not being righteous is a stupid in Islam because righteous is somebody have a free will. Do you understand me, guys? In order to be considered righteous or not, you have to be a person of a free will and then by the free will is given to you, you do as you wish. And then we will know who is a righteous, who is not. But here, there is no righteous. Anyone kill anyone, it is the fixed writing of Allah. Anyone rape anyone, it is the fixed writing of Allah. Anyone do any crime, good or bad actually, it is by the fixed writing of Allah. Do you see it? So what the point of saying? Did I say what the point? Uh, this is this is a word nobody can see it as good as I can say. When uh, when a woman she said to him, "Why in Islam there is no uh, woman? She is a prophet." Uh, Zakir Naik, he right away like to use the word point. He said, "The sister she got the point. In Islam, you don't have a woman. She is the prophet. I like thee, and you got the point, sister." You get the point. And then he explained, she cannot be a prophet because she have an ass. This is called the Islamic explanation, ass explanation. And the same goes for everything. You cannot maintain little brain with this religion. Brain and re this religion, they don't work together. You see, I understand that all religion, they have to believe in things Sometimes it's hard to explain, but this is, I mean, this is simple. This is simple. So everything is written by Allah. Everything is done by Allah. Everything, you kill me, I, it's by Allah. I kill you, by Allah. I, uh, you rape a woman, by Allah. Uh, a woman, she kill her husband, this is, a, this is the writing, destiny by Allah. So what, what is that? What is the religion here? So why we are exist? Hmm? Yeah, fixed by writing. Because, you know, according to Islam, Muslim, they believe one of the most important uh, uh, belief in Islam is uh, 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 to believe in Al-Qadr, the destiny. And the Muslim, they try to defend themselves with this destiny, stupid things, but they can play the game, say, oh no, yes, Allah, he wrote a destiny for us, but we have a free will. Muslims don't have a free will. We can prove it easy. Actually, I'm going to open my Skype. Maybe we can get a fish. By the way, yesterday my modem died and then came back to life. But I'm going to replace it. I ordered a new one already. It went, I thought I'm not going to be able to come here live on air today because he have a heart attack. Suddenly, oops, there's no signal. Okay, let us open our Skype. Only Muslim, please, can call us. Only what? Only Muslim, please. <clears throat> All right. We are in Skype. By the way, the first Skype is created by Allah. It used to be called Abdul Skype. Okay, if you are a Muslim, please just text me and I will take your call. All right, just text me. Don't call, just text. So we don't have many people calling at the same time. So, nor, so, nor can a soul die except by Allah leave. So in order for me to kill somebody, Allah have to give a permission for me to kill that soul, so the soul will die. He will give me a permission to use a knife or a gun, so that soul will die. He will give me permission to march toward this person to kill him. This is all the plan of Allah. Any Muslim? <clears throat> Can you explain the pen and the tablet in more details? Uh, uh, Jasmine, this is out of the topic, but as long as there's a connection with the Qadar, Allah, he have a tablet, 
and he uh, wrote in the tablet all those things, the fixed things for us, including the Quran. And this tablet is made from flour. I hope nobody will eat it. And the frame is made from zafaran and diamond. Zafaran. This is the God who have a tablet. Nice to meet you. And he have a pen. He created the pen and he said to pen write. And the pen he write all our destiny there. I mean that's fun. You know you watch Harry Potter. I mean you see you have a pen. You say pen can you write for me the number for number. This is like Alexa. Alexa. I don't have Alexa by the way. I'm just joking. This is what uh, you know Google and Alexa. And this is the pen of Allah. So Allah created the pen and he told him to write everything. Alexa. I have no Alexa in my home. No female are allowed. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> oh boy. Christian prince, he been destroyed by many speakers. Where are they? Why all of you Muslims can destroy me so easy, but not by calling me? I mean, have you ever heard of boxing match and you don't go to the stage to box the guy but you win that you win <laughs> I am destroyed by every single Muslim Zakir Naik will not debate me uh Sabil what is his name Dr. Sabil this guy is potato and this Christian Prince he said I did debate him but I did not debate him it's not me I mean, this is my voice, brothers and sisters. This is not my voice. I mean, his voice alone is hilarious. So where are they, the one who can beat me with many speakers? Where are your speakers? My Skype is open. Speakers, don't you say speakers? Are you talking now? We don't hear you. Call me. Where is the speakers? As long as all of you can break me pieces. Why all of you? They are so good to attacking me in videos. We laugh at them. But I'm here. All right. Anyway, so if you go in the book of Hadith, which I it is the laundry of Muhammad, all the laundry of Muhammad, his underwear, diapers, you can find it in both Hadith and Quran. But Hadith is hilarious. So if you go in the Hadith, you will see that even an infant, he died. Aisha, she thought that this infant will go to heaven because he did not reach the age of evil or doing evil. So he, she said, oh, this uh, infant, this little boy, he will be, uh, you know, a bird from the birds of paradise. Muhammad, he said to her, ho, 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 hey, Aisha, sis, Jupit, this is not true. It might be the otherwise. Why it might be the otherwise? He's an infant. He did not commit sin. Aisha, she said, read carefully. Aisha, the mother of the believers, <clears throat> uh, said that Allah, mess Allah Messenger was called to lead the funeral of a prayer of a child from Ansar. So this is a Muslim child. And she said to Muhammad, Allah Messenger, there is a happiness for this child who is a bird from the birds of paradise. Uh -huh. So I actually think that this child now is a bird in the paradise, singing. For it commit no sin, nor has reached the age when one can commit sin. He then said, Aisha, peradventure Aisha, stupid idiot. It may the otherwise, it might be the otherwise, hello? Do you see it? It might be the otherwise. How that can be? <clears throat> Hi CP, is this really you? No, it's not me. Guys, please, if you are a Muslim, only text me. Is that really you? Is it you? The one I'm looking for. La 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 It's you. Yes, it's me. And what does this have to do with the topic now? Why are you texting me? 
Who is a Muslim wanna call me? How a child who did not commit sin will go to hell? Why it might be the otherwise? Isn't you a Muslim you say every child is born as a Muslim? And actually I have to agree, I was born as a Muslim because my mom told me when I was born as a Muslim, I do not know to go to the bathroom as a Muslim. Therefore I used to do poo-poo underneath as a Muslim. And that is the only proof you have that we are born as a Muslim. So as long as every child is born as a Muslim, why this child is going to go to hell as a Muslim? Anyone? Where in the Quran, Muhammad, he said, I am Ahmad as a Isa prophecy. Guys, why are you are changing my topic? What's wrong with you? Are you suffering from the flight of thought like Muhammad? Very easy. Just go to the Quran and search for the word Ahmad. You will find it. Hello. Do I need to do it for you? Chapter 6, verse, chapter 61, verse number 6. Okay, go back to the topic. So, as a Muslim, so here you see that the destiny of Islam proving to us that Islam is a stupid. Why? Because now the whole story of Adam children are fabricated. Because it is destiny even to marry a woman. It is destiny when you die. It is destiny to divorce a woman. It is destiny to sleep with the woman. If we go in the hadith, we will find this. Even your sin as fornication is done by destiny. Read carefully. This is the fool Muhammad is speaking. I have nothing to do with him. Trust me, we, are, we, we both are Arab, but we are not relatives. Verily Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in. I like the word indulge. I, first time I learned it actually here. Indul I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. Indulge. May Allah indulge you. Fixed very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in and which he of necessity must commit do you see the word necessity must commit do you see it so how you muslim you say for location is a sin allah will punish you for it i mean this is the most stupid garbage religion so you force me to commit sin you force me to make fornication and then you punish me for fornication you for you you for uh, you you know what you muhammad you have a fornicator brain where is the hadith where allah says muhammad say uh, that allah says wrote the names of the one of the women he will sleep with her no he did not say that the hadith is not as uh, as you said the hadith says it's written in her vagina the names of the one who will if her not as you say well we can put it in the screen but i don't think we can find it in english and the muslims for sure many of them they will say to you oh we don't accept this hadith brother we don't accept but there are scholars they mention it in tv but it's not acceptable that you know uh, <clears throat> let us see This is the book, it's called Al Rawd al Atir, Fi Nuzhat al Khatir. Where it says, it's written, actually, if I translate for you this, uh, our program will, will turn into a sexual uh, program. I cannot really translate. I don't know, should I translate? 
My guys, what do you think? Should I translate? I mean, this is really horrible. Oh boy. I will use Google Translation. But I don't want to change the topic. Why are you doing this to me, guys? Uh, maybe, maybe we should uh, <clears throat> make a special program for this. I will translate for you some. قال الشيخ الإمام العلام الهمام سيد محمد okay so the Imam he said الحمد لله الذي جعل لذ الكبرى للرجل في فروج النساء praise be to Allah who he made the biggest joy for men in the vagina of women and in look at this let look at this second sentence oh boy and praise be to Allah that the one who he made the biggest joy for women is in the peep of men. You know what I'm talking about, right? I'm not going to read it. And the vagina will not be comfortable unless and have peace unless that peep, you know, enter into that peep, uh, you know. So, and then if they connected, the nikah happened. And the thought happened, boom, adaham, adaham, you know, boom, boom. And a great fighting, and the two desire get so close together by the touch of the hair of the two private part. And when the man, he start insert, I mean, that's it, we, we have to stop here. This is very filthy. Translate to English, maybe that will make me feel better. Okay, I don't know if you can see. Praise be the God, the one who made the great pleasure for the men in the women chicken. The, 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 the Google translation translate the women vagina as a chicken, <laughs> and he made it for the women by air. Air in Arabic, by the way, is the penis. Air, you see that the translation did not translate the word. So, and the air. Uh, Unless inserted into the vagina. <laughs> Let us change the topic. That's going out of control. All right. Thank you, Muhammadan. So anyway, the, the hadith is there. And Muslims, they, they, you know, they try to say this is not true. And, you know, but they teach it in their schools and they preach it. But it's embarrassing. So they have to get rid of it. All right. Let us go back to that topic because this is going out of control, out of hand. Oh, boy. Oh, mommy. Oh, mommy, mommy blue. Oh, mommy blue. Let us get the spray, you know, like when somebody, do, like a, a, those in the movie, they, they smoke or take a drugs or do something. They have a spray. Like, psh, 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 psh. Where is the spray? Where is the spray? Psh, 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 psh. We said nothing. We said nothing. Psh, 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 psh. We need a spray. We need a spray for this. It's so filthy, this cult, to the point you need a lot of a spray. Now, we go back to the topic. Destiny. It is destiny to make sacrifice. It is destiny to be a Muslim. It is destiny to be a Christian. It is destiny to be a fornicator. It is destiny to be a killer. It is destiny to be a thief. So why we do we punish for anything we do if it's all destiny? <clears throat> Let us see. Oh, a Muslim is, is, is texting me and saying to me, are you ready to be a Muslim? Okay, I'm ready. He will make me a Muslim, guys. We have a fish. <coughs> Answer, mister, are you ready to be a Muslim? The fish is not answering. Is an answer, Coward. Are you ready to be a Muslim? Are you ready to be a Muslim? Hey, I'm ready to be a Muslim. Are you? Potato.
What do you mean I already to be almost ten? Don't you see how big my brain is? How I'm going to shrink it? It's impossible. To be a Muslim is somebody believe that there is a God. He made me and he forced me to do things including fornication. And then this God is questioning me. Why are you the fornication? I say, Allah, you made me do fornication. Allah will say, yes, I made you do fornication. Do you have to obey me? Or do you, Allah, it says that there's no, no, nobody can change that. It is the will of Allah. Nobody can change it. I don't care. You should try to change it. I made you fornicate, yeah. I am the God of fornication. My name is Allah. <clears throat> yeah, if you didn't, you know, Abdul, if you don't call me, let us give him one more time. I will give him one more call. Because if you don't answer, I'm going to add him to the potato list. Okay, we add you to the potato list. Forget. I have potato list, you know, black people, you know, potato. That's it. Potato, 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 potato. If you have a question, don't send me a question in Skype. Send me your question. In YouTube. Any Mohammedan? <clears throat> So if you, if you see here how the how the skull, the garbage is connected all over. In one hand, Allah will make you commit adultery. In, one, in the other hand, Allah will punish you for your adultery, which is very funny. In one hand, Allah He will reward righteous by adultery. I mean, what is adultery? What is exactly adultery? God He created Adam, and He created Eve. When the man multiply, like as an example, David in the Bible is an example of that. He did not do the permission of God. He was multiplying his wives. When a man, he multiply his wives against God, well, he is committing adultery. God created Adam and one Eve. So how does religion end with many Eves? To the point you will have tens of thousands of them in the heaven of Allah. Women you never met. So as you see from the book we were reading, very filthy, things turn into sexual, uh, like those, you know, there's, there's some uh, movies about uh, like uh, uh, Koma Sotra, you know, Koma Sotra, uh, the Quran is a comma sutra religion. Sexual pleasure, food in the belly, wine in the hand. And boys around you, they are naked and they are white like pearls. And a penis will never go sleep. Uh, <clears throat> Debate somebody, his name Kidi Muslim. Kidi Muslim? Why he don't text me this Kidi Muslim? I ask him to text me. I don't look for people's uh, name. But let me try to find him. Just for you. Because we are desperate looking for a fish. <coughs> well, I search for Kidi Muslim. I don't see anything. The name is wrong.
I have it correct in front of me in the screen. Ki di Muslim. I see nothing. Let him let him text me, my friend. All Muslims are hero, but they don't want to prove it. I'm here, I'm live, my Skype is open. There's no need for a drama. Um, yeah, but we don't want to change the topic. You see, guys, you are, you are forcing me. You keep asking me questions have nothing to do with the topic. So how we will finish the topic? Our topic is what we are celebrating today as Muslims. Alhamdulillah, I'm Muslim, you know. And uh, I praise Allah every day, as you notice. Uh, and uh, I believe Muhammad is a true prophet and the proof that Muhammad is a true prophet he used to have sex with all his wives one after one without even washing Alhamdulillah a brother if he is not a prophet how he can do that even those stories which I find hilarious and stupid proving to us that Islam is based in sexuality and nothing but a fraud those people they became obsessed with sex to the point to believe in a man he have to be sexually powerful in fact muhammad he cannot have sex and all those stories are, are cover up you know when you uh, when somebody he is doing something the opposite so he created a story like you know a guy let's say a guy he's a coward he want to tell a woman how brave he is but he knew he's a coward once I was walking down street and there's like 10 guys came to attack me and like this, 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 oh, okay. But reality is different. This is Muhammad. Muhammad, he cannot have sex. And the Quran and the Hadith are proven to us, to us. People in the Quran, they accuse him that he's cut off, which means his penis is not functioning. And the Quran, and the hadith proving to us that Muhammad he was imagining himself having sex but he never did you see it the Muslim they claim uh, magic for that they say the Prophet Aisha she said the Prophet continued for such and such period imagining that he had sex in fact he did not so all this period Aisha she was sitting in her bed waiting for the sexual predator Muhammad he never come he was in the other bed, imagine he have sex. Do you see it? Do you see it, my friend? If you remember the other hadith, where uh, uh, let's see here it says, where a woman, she came to Muhammad and she told him she saw a wet dream. Um Salim. Umm Salama told how Umm Salim said, Umm in Arabic means mother. Mother. You see the Muslim, they call themselves Abu, Umm, Abu, Umm. They go to Islamic chat, you sign everybody is Umm, Abu, Umm, Abu, Umm, Abu. Uh -huh. They don't have names. So the mother of Salim said, Oh, Messenger of God, Allah, God has not, is not ashamed of the truth. This is the truth now. What is the truth? Hmm. If is any washing necessarily for a woman when she has sex or a dream? I mean, look at the decent woman. Allah is not ashamed. She want to inform the whole town that she is touching herself and she is seeing sex or a dream. Everybody should know. Take a note. Um Salim is horny. And then the prophet, he did not say, shut up, you idiot. What are you talking about? He said, yes, when she see a sign of a liquid, he go in details now. Where is the liquid will be seen? Let us guess in her nose. No. Ears. No. You know where. Umm Salama then covered her face and said, see Umm Salama, she got like, what? She covered her face. You see, when woman like, they're surprised with something, she put her hand over her face like, what? What, what? And what she said, Messenger of Allah, does women have a sexual dream? The fact the translation is not accurate. It says, 
which means she have the orgasm. He said, yes, yes. He replied, yes, of course she does. <laughs> in what then? In what way does the child resemble her? Look, what, Doctor Muhammad? So the reason the child resemble her because she have a sexual uh, uh, play. This is how the the liquid come from her vagina, supposedly. So you notice here, this is the wife of Muhammad. The wife of Muhammad, she never have orgasm. This is the wife. How the wife of the prophet, false prophet, she never have orgasm. Read the hadith here. And it is sahih, as you see. They cannot play games with it. If she sees that she has this charge, then let's, you see, look what happened in translation. You see the fabricated translation? We just changed the hadith translation uh, and the story is different. If she, if she sees that she has this charge, then let her perform a bath. Um Salama, she said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, does that really happen? Which means women have this charge. The wife of Muhammad, she never had this charge. So what the Muslims talk about Muhammad having sex with women after women? No, and now we know he never. Why they have never have this charge? Because he maybe he was using something else. Anyway, anyway. Dirty, the Muhammad Qadr saying to me, Dirty, I am the one dirty as your books. This is your books. Coward. You don't feel dirty when you speak about muta and you practice it, but you feel dirty when we talk about it. You don't feel dirty when your mother she go and rent herself to a man for one night or one hour, and you, feel, you don't feel dirty about it, and now you feel dirty because we caught it for you. Anyway, going back to our topic. I mean, look how this topic became so complicated. <clears throat> so, everything happened by the will of Allah. Anything. Fornication, adultery, killing. So, going back to the story about Adam's sons. The sons of Adam when they kill each other, that was a destiny of Allah. And here you see the Quran showing the stupidity of the author of the Quran. Because it says, Allah accepts sacrifice only from those who they are righteous. But who is the one who made them righteous or not righteous? Allah. So how you can call them righteous if you are the, the one? You see, if I am forcing you to be guilty, how you can be a person who is not righteous? You know what I mean? Same time, Allah he established the concept of sacrifice to approve anyone. So why Muhammad did not do as they asked him to do, as the Quran say? They, they said, Allah took our promise not to believe in any messenger unless he showed us a sacrifice consumed by fire. And this is exactly what happened according to Muhammad. When the sacrifice was given by the children of Adam, Allah, he sent fire from heaven and the fire ate the sacrifice. How come Muhammad, he established a rule? Allah, he established a rule that anyone you want me to see, do you want to see if I approve him or not? He have to give a sacrifice and then I will send a fire from heaven. Read carefully. This is Tafsir al Jalalain, and this is the Quran, chapter 5, verse number 27. And recite to them, Muhammad. And here, by the way, the word recite, recite, uh, it's very stupid. Why? Because Watli, uh, Watli alayhim, uh, recite for them the story of uh, Adam. That's mean Muhammad, he knew the story, he knew the verse from before, but he just received it. Because you don't say the word recite. And you see even the Muslims saying the word recite in the translation. You don't say to somebody recite if something he never heard of yet. Recitation have to be from the memory of something already you know. So how you say to him recite? The guy he just heard the story from you. So the story continue here saying, 
to them to your people the story of the, and the tale of the two sons of Adam and Abel uh, and Cain truth uh, tr uh, truthfully بالحق, بالحق, which means by the truth so here the story continue and says each of them have an offer how that each offered a sacrifice to God to Allah which is in Abel case was a ram and in the case of Cain it was a green crops and it was accepted from the one of them namely Abel when fire came down from heaven and consumed the offering so what is the sign of accepting a righteous man according to the Quran you make an offering Allah he sent a fire and the fire will consume your offering Muslims who speak about paganism who have a comment who is a Muslim he have a comment Qurban You Muslim, you say Christianity is paganism. They crucified Jesus, which is stupid of you to say, because we did not take Jesus, put him in the cross. It's not me. We Christians, we love the Messiah. We did not sacrifice him to be forgiven. Sacrificing, we are talking about, it's you, the believer, putting someone as a sacrifice so God will forgive you. Right? That's what you do. Or God will accept you. For us, the Jews arrested Jesus by, for sure, the Roman, by the order of the Jews. And they took him to court. And in the court, they proved him no guilt on him. Yet still, they want to crucify him. Here you see, it's not Jesus walking to the cross. Even, even Jesus himself, he did not say, hey, come crucify me. Come here, come here, I want to be crucified. So they change the details of the story and the meaning of the story to make it look something else. And this is always what Islam is about, fabrication. Here we see that the first one who established sacrifice of a blood is Allah. Real sacrifice. You see, they say to you the story of Abraham, which they copy from the Old Testament, which is a proof of Christianity to be true and Islam to be false. And we will go to that first, right after this one. <clears throat> uh, Muslim Piyapar, he is saying, Mr. Genius, what are you talking about? Recite. Hmm. Uh, this is Abbas. He is delivering pizza now. And he is, uh, you know, uh, making a statement. Abbas is the same as his prophet. When he make a statement, he make a poo poo. What are you talking about? Recite is the same. What are you talking about? Recite is similar to singing. Huh. Okay. This is your dictionary, idiot. And you speak English better than me. You are a certified donkey. Recite or uh, declaim a poem, a message from the memory before the audience. Do you see it's coming from where? It is something you recite from the memory. So who is the genius here? So in order to recite it, it has to be in your memory already. You're an idiot. And the funny you speak English better than, than, better than me, I mean, I don't know, you, maybe you spent all your life in England. I don't know if you are born there. I am just an immigrant who had a few years of speaking English. This is what recite mean. You recite something is is already in your memory. Right? 
Somebody says, if we came from God, aren't we all God? I don't know what do you mean by that, but let us say, if you are speaking metaphorically, we can say, the Bible says, all of you are gods, you know, because the Bible says, be holy like your father, be holy like your father. But does that make us really God? No. It's a metaphorical statement that being holy is a statement or an order or a project to work in, but we are not God. God, the word God, if you speak about the one who we mean as God, is the one who's called Almighty, who can do no, what nobody can do. As simple as that. God always is measured by two things. His ability is why he's called Almighty. And how decent and amazing he is as ethic. That make him, uh, uh, the person we worship, the God. Now we go back to that topic. I hope Abbas will buy some Vaseline because he have a lot of fingerprints from my hand over his bum. So here you see, they said to him, it's also, they, say, they, they said, Allah took up our promise not to believe in any messenger unless he showed us a sacrifice consumed by fire. You see, the verse here does not say, oh no, this is not true. This is not true. No. Look what he said. Say, this is the answer now. Muhammad has been a debate now. There come to you, messenger before me, with the clear signs, and even with that you ask for. But the Jews, they believe in the messengers before. So why you are saying they don't believe? And as long as Allah is the one who set the righteous rule, who is righteous, who is accepted by Allah, as we showed you in the other verse, why you don't practice what you set as rule? The one who Allah accepts his sacrifice is the one who Allah he approves. So all what they're asking you for, show us that you are approved by Allah. All what you need to do, bring a goat. Muslim Pyopar is saying the following. Just to show you, again, the stupidity of those who follow this cult, they don't know what they are following. Sacrificing animals is a symbolic and show our sincerity to Allah. It is required, uh, requires effort and costs money, and for that Allah reward us. Okay, hold on. Guys, did you, did you see what Abbas just said? Anyone notice the stupid statement he just made? Sacrifying animal is symbolic and show our sincerity. Thank you. If this is true, that's mean your prophet is a fraud. Why he did not show sincerity when they ask him to show it? You see, I'm going with your stupid answer. And your stupid answer is getting your prophet busted. They ask him, they say to him, Allah took our promise not to believe in any messenger unless he show us a sacrifice, as you call it, sincerity. And that sacrifice had to be consumed by fire. Why he did not do that? I mean, even that is hard to do. Muhammad, he cannot take one sheep from the sheep he owned and sacrifice it and show them that he is a prophet. How hard it is. They did not ask him to make the water gold. They did not ask him to move mountains. They did not ask him to bring the dead from, from, to, to life. They did not ask him to make the blind see. All what they ask him, sacrifice anyhow. And you are the one who said, this is a something we do to show our sincerity. It's an offer. Do it anyway. Show sincerity to Allah. What you will, how come Muhammad, he is willing to sacrifice when it's not time, but when it's time, he sacrifice. All what is going to take to believe in him now is just to sacrifice an animal. Allah, he will send the fire and that's it. Bingo. The story is over. But because Muhammad is a fraud, he knew that Allah is not God. He knew nobody will come and consume the fire. 
He refused. Correct, guys? This is the real reason. And look, they cannot deny that this is true, what they are saying. Even the verse itself did not say, oh, this is not true, Allah did not say that. He agreed with them by, by, by ignoring what they said. He says, okay, well, there come to you messenger before me uh, with the clear signs, and even with that, you ask them for, okay, messengers before you come with a clear sign. That means all messengers, they have a clear sign. Where's your sign? How come you don't have any? And when the Muslim, they say the prophet, he have miracles, actually here prove that this is false. Ah, Muslim Piyapar, he found that his answer is stupid. So now he's saying he was answering without knowing, without the topic. Muslim Piyapar Abbas, he's trying to fix it. And now he, 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 I mean, those people are really weird. He tried to fix it now. So look what he said. I don't know the context. I joined just five minutes ago. So you are saying to me you are officially a stupid who answer without knowing even the question or the topic. Idiot. The only person I am feeling sorry for is your wife who have to live with such a person like you 24 hours a day. For me, it's just a chat. I close and you're gone. But imagine what happened to this poor woman. I bet you your wife, she have a sign in her house that says he lived as a donkey, he never came back as a horse. So you are answering me without knowing what I'm talking about. And now you know that you are a donkey. So you're saying, oh, I don't know what the context of the question. That make it even more horrible. Can you find one smart Muslim say something smart to me? <sighs> if you want to call me, you have to be a Muslim. Are you a Muslim? We have somebody saying, can I call? Let us ask him, are you a Muslim? Uh, the one who said he want to translate my book to Turkish, please contact me in Patreon. And I will be happy to see people translating my book. <clears throat> uh, here we have a, a person, his name is Mimi. He is saying the Prophet only, like he has explained why the Prophet did not sacrifice, he said. The Prophet only obey Allah. Not people. That's false. First, Muhammad, he obey Khadija. Muhammad, he obey uh, all people. Even he changed Islam just for the sake of people to accept him. And the top of that, you idiot. It is Allah who made such an order that if anyone is righteous, he have to give sacrifice to approve him. Don't you read? Don't you, don't you know how to read? This is your Quran. He obey Allah. Thank you very much. Why don't he do obey Allah then? Allah said, present to me sacrifice, and the one I accept, the sacrifice from him, that is the righteous one. So as long as Muhammad, he obey only Allah. With Allah, he said that. Make an offer. And the same happened to Abraham. In the story, no sound. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay 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 guys there's no need for those signs to put for me in the screen <clears throat> there's no need to put those signs in the screen we notice we see stop doing that if you are a person who put those signs in the street in the, in, the, in, the, in the chat, number one, now you learn that you have no patient. Number two, you are not thinking because you think we are, you are the only one who notice. Number three, I don't know what you are doing. 
Like, can we change that? It's internet. Are you waiting for Allah to fix it? Have patient. What happened to you? I mean, a human being is amazing. In a second, everybody's going crazy. <laughs> circle, the circle. Is it enough one of them to give a circle? No. Now we have to copy. All of us, we have to give the circle. The circle, all of us. Yeah, join, join the club. Yeah, let's put more circles. Because, you know, that will fix it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, people. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Mimi Hijab, the boy is your prophet, and the one who is hiding is Mimi Hijab. I am the one who call him the son of Muta. He is the one who hang up on me and go watch it. Boy, little boy, and who told you that if Muhammad he spit, that will make him God? <laughs> boy, <laughs> tell your little boy, son of Muta, to be brave and to call me. I am the one who call him. Call him. He did not even allow me to speak for three minutes. I am the one who called. The coward he said to the Muslims he would debate me, but he never did. Son of Muta, like he's a prophet. Boy. Actually, he's not even a boy. The guy with the pink t-shirt. I cannot call him a boy. He is a lady boy. Pink t-shirt and he is an Arab or Middle Eastern go on the Middle East ask anyone who is the one in the Middle East wear pink t-shirt you will find the answer the pinky boy now we go back to our topic all of them by the way they are heroes but none of them dare to debate me cowards when this guy he said that the Muslim he would debate me he brought seven people to his, his, his room seven people are with him and they did anything for a video and all of us we got them busted with that with that uh, with, with that uh, recording it was nothing but a, a, a fabrication liars that like this is an act of a boy who is terrified he don't want to debate me please please play this part mute him mute him mute him mute him hang up on him hang up on him coward son of muta now Allah took our promise not to believe in a messenger unless he showed us a sacrifice. If we go into the story of Adam, sorry, the story of Abraham, we will find Muhammad is getting busted again. So they cannot say they are following Abraham when they practiced today as called Idul Adha. Because they, they sacrifice Adha not only in this day, even in Ramadan. Ramadan is Adha too. Actually, in the month of Ramadan, they sacrifice way more animals than this month. Look at this. In the stupid Quran, <clears throat> it says the following in chapter 37, verse 107. Muhammad, who claimed to be Abrahamic, but yet he cannot practice what Abraham practiced. They asked him in official challenge to do what Abraham did. Not to sacrifice his son. Muhammad don't have children. But to sacrifice a sheep. For the story of sacrificing of Abraham, making it so clear that when Abraham he sacrificed or he wanted to sacrifice his son, Allah replaced the sacrifice of Abraham with a mighty sacrifice, even in Arabic it says, We sacrifice him with a great, tremendous ransom. Here you ask the Muslim, or the Muslim they will ask you, when Jesus sacrificed himself, he sacrificed himself to who? God sacrificed himself to God? Here we ask you the same question you ask us, you idiot. When Allah he sacrifice, sacrifice to who? God sacrifice to God. Do you see the stupidity? And Islam is do not know what the word to be consistent means. We ransom him, we ransomed him 
would a great sacrifice, i.e. a ram? Question. Allah sacrifice a ram. Why Muhammad cannot sacrifice a ram? Are you better than Allah? This is number one. Number two. Allah sacrifice a ram to who? You Muslim, you say Christians, if Jesus sacrifice himself, how God sacrifice himself to God? First of all, we don't believe that Jesus sacrificed himself to God. You're an idiot. Jesus sacrificed himself for us. Idiot. But here, you need to explain to me why Allah, he sent a ram from heaven. And this ram is called Azim, one of the names of Allah. Azim is one of the names of Allah. Don't you Muslim you say, uh, uh, Al Azim. This is the name of Allah. A mighty sacrifice. If you change the translation, always the, the, the Quran change, depend in the translator. For Islam and the Quran is very flexible. Depend in the propaganda and the agenda. Mighty sacrifice. Why? He is God. How the sacrifice is mighty it's a ram anyway so here you notice that quran approve that muhammad is a fraud for a mighty sacrifice have to come from heaven down to earth not from earth if you go and read the interpretation for this verse chapter 37 verse 107 let us go <clears throat> Do you see how easy to get Islam busted? The stupid cult of Muhammad? This is Tafsir al We ransom him, the one whom he had been commanded to sacrifice. Namely, the Muslim they say, look, 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 look at the stupidity of this cult. Namely, Ishmael or Isaac? I mean, how confused this cult to know who is the one who was going to be sacrificed? Anyone knows why the Muslims are confused? Some scholars, they say it was Isaac. Some scholars, they say it was Ishmael. Because Muhammad the donkey, he doesn't know. Quran is a plain book. There's no, where, there's nowhere in the story it says who he, Allah, he ordered who to sacrifice who. I mean, what is, what kind of a book? You don't even to say, want to say, who is the one who Allah wanted to be sacrificed? And what happened? Because Quran is not a story. Quran is like, a, you know, a, 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 let me describe it for you this way. Somebody was writing a book. And then he opened the door of his house and the window was open. In his table, in his office, was a story. His story is writing it. Another story for somebody when they're fixing it. Another story of somebody when they're correcting it. So there's many stories in the table. And then the, 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 the wind blew all the papers and they went in the street. Then a thief, he came and he started collecting those pages. He put them together and he made a book. And that's why the book is not connected. There's no connection in this book. If you go and read the chapters, you will see that there's no connection between the verses. And there's no story in the story. So now we see in the interpretation saying, namely, and look how funny it is, namely, I mean, how namely, and yet you do not know who. I mean, do you see, guys, the word namely? Uh, hold on. Uh, the context in chapter 37, it's clear that it was Ismail. Show me the verse, Abdul. Guys, the context is clear, it is Ishmael. Show us where. <laughs> you see, as long as... Abbas, Abbas. I really like you. I wish the city would allow me to grow someone like you in my backyard. But they don't. Just to show you how stupid you are. It is clearly, it is Ishmael. So why in the interpretation saying it might, it, it's Ishmael or Isaac? 
You just said the context making it clear. Ah, it's clear for you. The scholars did not see it, brother. So the scholar they say, namely Ishmael or Isaac. But it's so clear, brother, it is Ishmael. I mean, do you see how we're clear to the point? A great scholar like the one who wrote Tafsir Jalalain, he did not notice that, but Abbas he noticed because Abbas he delivered pizza. And by delivering pizza by time, he became a professional in Pizzano, explanation for the Quran. I mean, how many times a day I have to say stupidity is amazing. So Allah himself, he gives sacrifice. Muhammad will not give sacrifice. Why? They ask him to give sacrifice to prove that he is a prophet and he is a righteous man, accepted by God. He refused. That is telling us all the story. Muhammad is a fraud. Hmm? Why Muhammad did not get excited? Okay, say, okay, okay, okay. I'm going to give you sacrifice. So what a big deal. Huh? The same as Adam did. His children, the same as Abraham did, I will do the same. I'm a righteous man, I will do it, and Allah will send the fire as He said for Allah put the conditions. We have 1,200 people listening, and not even one single Abdul calling us. Not a single Abdul. Look like we are short of Abdulism. Abdulism, the most stupid cult. They copy stories from others and they cannot maintain the stories. But if we go here, going back to the story of Adam, sorry, of Abraham, as long Muslim today they celebrate him, but they claim that Abraham celebration, which is very funny. And guys, imagine, imagine, they celebrate this day after going around the Kaaba. <laughs> Unbelievable! The most hilarious cult. If we go in the Quran we will find the following. <clears throat> the Muslim, they say that Abraham is the one who built the Kaaba. Correct? Abraham is the one who built the Kaaba. Okay. Ishmael, he helped Abraham in building the Kaaba. Okay. But the Quran said that nobody came to Mecca before Muhammad. Is that true? <clears throat> Muhammadan. Is that true? I just showed you a second ago, but I mean, I gave you an example of a story of a person writing books or correcting books of others, and then somebody collected the stories with them together. Chapter 28, verse number 46, it says the following. Uh, by the way, let's uh, change the translation. Hold on. Because translation changed the story, believe it or not. <clears throat> Any story you want to read in the Quran, you need to go and see all the translations because you will see that translation change from place to place. In chapter 28, Verse number 46 is speaking about a prophet who came to people who never before him a person came. See, using the same word, مَا أَتَاهُمْ مِنْ نَذِيرًا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ And then, 
in chapter 23, sorry, 32, it says the same statement. Chapter 34, it says the same statement. Chapter 43, 23, it says the same statement. What that statement mean? Let us take a look. I mean, why the Quran keeps saying the same thing? Change the translation. I will do any translation you Muhammadan like. What translation you like? This is Muhammad Bikta. Read carefully. And even so we sent not a warner before thee, Muhammad, into the township which is Mecca. Okay, we never send, but they do the same. But they are the verse saying that we never send a messenger to this town. So we never send a messenger to any town, but they do humiliate the person. They don't like this person. In different verse, we will see Muhammad is the only ever messenger king to such a town. But we had not given them book which they could study, nor we send a messenger to them before thee as a warner. My friend, if you are a Muslim only, you can call me. Don't call me. Don't call me if you are a Muslim. You know what? Maybe Christian Prince, he don't understand the verse. So let's see the interpretation. Chapter 34, verse number 44. <clears throat> Let us close some browsers. We have too many. Okay. Okay. Any Muslim can explain to us what's happening? How we send no warner before you to them. Any Muslim? We never send a warner before you to Mecca. So all the story that Abraham is the one who built the Kaaba, Abraham who established the Hajj, even the Muslim, they have different story about the Hajj. They say that Adam, he did 40 Hajj. Maybe you not know. Adam, he was landed in Sri Lanka, according to Muslims. And this is a proof the roots of Islam. The root of Islam is Indian, Hindu roots. Every Muslim agree that Adam, he landed in India, specifically in Sri Lanka. And then he, how he went from Sri Lanka all the way to Mecca, nobody can, don't ask me. Because as you know, he have to cross the sea. This is the first man. He don't even have a donkey yet. He have to cross the sea. And then he go to for thousands of kilometers and he did Hajj 40 times to Mecca and there was 40,000 angels waiting for Adam in the way to Mecca or in the front of Mecca <laughs> and here you see that Mecca confirming that never receive a warner neither Ishmael neither Isaac neither Abraham neither any so how Muhammad claimed that Abraham is the one who built the Kaaba, as the Quran says. Any Muslim? Chapter 2, verse 1 to 7, it says, Abraham and Ishmael is the one who raised the foundation of the house. Do you see it? It's a clear contradiction. 
Abraham was there, Ishmael was there, and for Muslims, by the way, Ishmael is a prophet. So we have two prophets. So why the other verse saying, nobody came to them before you? Muhammad. Hmm? If you go right now, let me show you. If we search in Prophet Google, peace upon him. And by the way, here, this is why we can take from Wikipedia anything. You have to check it out. Look what they say. Some Muslims and Christians in Sri Lanka scribe it, it where Adam, it was the first ancestor. We, you know, we Christian we don't believe in such a garbage. Uh, Adam in Sri Lanka. Islamic landmark. Adam peak Sri Lanka. Yeah, this is where the parachute of Adam landed, brother. Hmm? The Muslims are so confused, and even they, they they have a footprint. The Muslims are fighting with the with the Buddhas about it. If this is the footprint for uh, uh, the God of the Buddhas, or this is the the footprint of Adam, you know. By the way, I noticed somehow that Adam is from Sri Lanka. I noticed. I don't know. I mean, I have a feeling that he is from there. Look what the Muslim website says. This is footprint measuring 5.7 by 2.6 is believed to be the footprint of a prophet Adam. But this is a place for the for the Buddhas. The Muslims, as usual, they try to hijack anything. Brother, this is a footprint of Adam. Adam uh, uh, foot was so big. Five foot point seven. Is the foot of Adam that explain why I cannot find shoes my foot is like six foot something you know only the brother actually if I show you the the, the graves the Muslims in their fiction filthy, filthy cult they created you will not believe it if we go and search uh, prophet Noah Tomb. Let us see what we will find. Oh boy. If a Christian prince here, he would say, If, 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 if. A brother? A brother? I mean, Islamic religion is full of true stories. Let me show you. Brother, this is the tomb of our brother Noah. Look how short it is, brother. Do you notice how short it is, brother? Big, huge room, brother. And by the way, in Islam, you can find the same tomb in many places. I don't know how this happened, don't ask me. You can find the tomb in Iran. You can find the tomb in Samarkand. You can find the tomb in, 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 in Syria. You can find the tomb everywhere. Look like this guy, he died everywhere. Look how short this grave is. Oof. You know, this is what I'm looking for because I'm really like I don't know how to, I don't know if I can fit there. This is the tomb of Noah brother. Why he was a sandwich? I mean, how this guy can walk? He looked like a snake, man. He cannot walk. He had to creep. I mean, do even the Muslims use their brain? How a person, he is so tall like this, he can walk. And they have thousands of graves like this. Noah, Cain, Abel, all the names, you name them, all of them, they are long, brother. All of them, they are long. Alhamdulillah. Look at this one here. 
Oof. It looked like a pipeline between uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine. This is this. This is small. What happened? I think this guy was short. I think he wasn't eating good. I mean, come on. There's no way he was eating good. I think in his time, this is explained that there was some uh, uh, hunger and suffering in his time. Look at this another grave. Look at this one. This is shorter. This is like, at least, I don't know how, how far he is taking this picture from. I mean, where do you get those graves from? Look at this one. Prophet Daniel. If, 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 if. This is a Prophet Daniel. The Muslims, they have a tomb for a Prophet Daniel. They found it. And look how tall Daniel is. And the question I ask myself always, I mean, why my grandfather became short like this? He is just like 80 meter tall, my grandfather. I mean, what happened? Why he is not like his grand, 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 grandfather? Do you think my brother, this is because of a global warming, brother? I want to take you all in a trip to those graves so we can take selfie together. Look at this one. Look. Oh boy. This is in Uzbekistan. <clears throat> this is in Uzbekistan. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Islam is not, you know, there's no fictions and garbage. Islam is the religion of fictions from the beginning to the end and look this guy is taking selfie now alhamdulillah alhamdulillah and then by time the muslim they start shrinking the the size of the graves so here we see a smaller size like what happened uh, because now here they are he is short in vitamin this guy is just like maybe 15 meter tall Hazrat Ham As, what Ha As? This is his name. I mean, this is the grave of Hazrat Ham. Ah, this is the son of. Ah. Look here, what happened? How come Noah, his grave is like eighty meter, and his and 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 Ham, his grave is like what? This is ten meters. What happened? He got short so fast. This is Ham, guys. This is Hazrat Ham. Assalamu alaihi wasallam, brother Ham. A hamburger. This is Hazrat Ham. This is the grave of who? Ah, uh, here. Ah, uh, now. Uh, no, we thought it's so short. I was wondering what happened. Ah, this is the whole picture. Here we go. This is the same grave. Picture of a grave, Hazrat Ham bin Nuh, brother. Do you see how small it is? Look at this one here. I'm getting dizzy here. This guy is 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 going with his camera and he keep recording like walking down the street inside the grave inside the grave la 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 la. Keep walking, keep walking. Record, record, brother. It's endless. 210 foot long brother where is that prophet amran <laughs> guess this is the this is the grave of who guess guess guys this is the grave of who who is amran this is the father of mary so you can you can ask yourself how tall mary the mother of jesus was this is Prophet Amran, brother, and he was a prophet. But Mary, her father, his name is not Amran. Yeah, the stupid Muhammad, he thought that Amran, the father of Maryam, the sister of Aaron, is the same person, the father of Mary. Additional proof that Muhammad is a stupid idiot. 210 foot only.
after this count, after the, I, sorry, I cannot make it shorter. I apologize, I cannot make it shorter than this. I mean, don't try. If we call Zachary Naik now, and we ask him about uh, <clears throat> how this has happened, as long as there's nobody, not a single Muslim, 1300 people watching and not a single Muslim on a call, I will log off Skype. I'm getting nothing but text from Christians. We say no Christians. All right, we are out of Skype. Well, our Skype was open almost for two hours and not a single quarter Muslim. <clears throat> If we call Zakir Naik about why the tomb of uh, uh, Imran is so big like this. He's not answering. He's not going to answer. Okay, hold on. Let me look for the, uh, the number he used for uh, red line matter. Uh, Zach and Nike have a special line, you know. <clears throat> Where is the number? Okay, let's see. Maybe now we can contact him officially. See, he have an old cell phone. He hide it. Christian Prince, hey, you don't call me. Uh, Zach and Nike, how you know it's me? It doesn't show in your phone ID. First of all, the only one who called me at the middle of the night is the Christian Prince. And I told you don't call me. I am going to call you to the police. And I'm going to tell you that you are doing sexual harassment. Oh, what sexual harassment, man? I'm just calling you to ask you a question about that grave. What does this have to do with sexual harassment? First of all, you are calling in the wrong time. And I am speaking, I'm not wearing my underwear. And you are calling in a very, very long time. And you know, and you know, I am sexy and you know it. Hey, okay, I know that you are sexy and you know it, but I did not ask you about anything I have to do with sex now. So why are you saying sexual harassment? Come on, man. Don't do that. Shame on you. We, we have a picture. I don't know if you are looking. It says that the grave of Amran is uh, 210 foot long. First of all, so respect. His name Prophet Amran. Hey, well, since when he became Prophet, what he did? What is the prophecy he said? I don't know, but he's the prophet. Oh, okay, forget about this topic. I mean, no problem. But why his grave is 210 foot? Can you explain to us? Brother Sitter, I know that he is playing my voice in your program. In why what? In your program. I, I, I did not get that. In your program. Ah, you mean in my program? Exactly. Okay. Just let me grab the umbrella, please. Uh, so, okay. And I know he's going to use my voice to get popularity. And he became popular. And the reason, I'm not going to debate him. And I will not answer him. Because if I debate him, I will go to make him popular. Uh, but uh, Zach and I, everybody knows about me, man. What are you talking about? What popular? May, may Allah popular you, you. You know, what are you talking about? Where is the answer now? So you will not answer me because you will make me popular. Okay, what about you answer me and don't make me popular? Can you do that? Exactly. I'm going to try to answer you without making you popular. So I'm not going to say the word Christian Prince. Because if I say the word Christian Prince, I will make you popular. But already you said that many times. I'm not going to say Christian Prince anymore. I promise you. Because each time I say the word Christian Prince, you get more reviewer. But you just keep repeating my name. So you said you want to don't want to do that why you are doing it again and again i'm telling you i swear by allah i'm not going to say the word christian prince ever again okay so christian prince oh you just swear by allah you will not say my name man come on anyway can you answer us why the grave became 210 foot long christian prince i heard you in the channel you said that your beard is 20 foot tall yeah so what the grave of the world cannot be more than 20 to 110 foot tall? I can grow my beard. I mean, it's not a big deal. It's impossible. Prove it to me. Open your camera. Um, you get a point here. Exactly. 
and you're not the debate. So it's very logical that brother, Prophet Umran, he was very, very, very tall. And he was actually not 210 foot. I have to protect you. He had the length of 209 foot. Yeah, because we have to put him in. Exactly. Now we are getting smarter. And now we invite you to convert to Islam. Uh, but still you do not answer me. I mean, what happened? How this guy is so tall and why he is the tallest? Because it says here on the screen, the longest grave in the world. Is he really the tallest? This is a, not a true authentic statement. Because the Prophet Adam is taller. And Prophet Noah is taller. And it's not true. This is like propaganda. Okay, so Adam is taller than 210. Like he was what, like 310 or something? I'm not sure. But he is between the 400 to 500 foot tall. So he, how, how he can walk, Isaac? Yeah? How he can walk? He looks like a snake now. I mean, look, you are so skinny as the grave shows, but you are so tall. How you can walk, man? The wind will break you. Uh, do you think like they have, like they used to have like a, uh, something to help them, like a walking aid? Exactly. He used to have two sticks. One stick in the hand and the other stick in the left hand. So when he walk, they will not break. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, you have a point here, Zach and I. I want to say thank you for calling me. Christian Prince, I swear by Allah, I'm not going to use your name again. And I will never say Christian Prince again because if I say Christian Prince, I will give you popularity. And each time I know I say Christian Prince, you are going to go to my dealer. So I'm not going to say the word Christian Prince again. I promise you, I will never ever say Christian Prince. Okay, Zach and I stop saying my name. Christian Prince, don't call me again. Okay. Christian Prince, call me later, you know. So, okay, okay, Zach, take care. This is Islam. This is Islam. Adha, Fatha, Ramadan. All is a pagan practice. All is a copy. Even the one is not a pagan is a copy of somebody. Any Abdul? Why you guys are laughing? What's wrong with you? Take it. This is very serious. We spoke with uh, Zachary Naik. And this guy, he thinks he's a big shot, by the way. He think I use his uh, I, I use his voice and his answers because they are hilarious, or stupid, funny. That's why I I use him. I don't use uh, others because I cannot find this guy is like a goat. You know, he he repeats things, but he don't know what he's talking about. Uh, can you explain the end and the end of the video about the book prayer? Uh, I don't know. This is a different topic, my friend. Arabs are blessed by Allah, but you turned away from blessing. Shame on you. You see, Muhammad Qadir, again, you get your prophet busted. Guys, did you see how Muslims, they help me to prove Islam to be stupid? Read carefully what this Abdul just said. I turned away from Allah blessing. That's Muhammad. That's me. Muhammad is a fraud. <clears throat> For the Quran said in chapter 4 verse number 88 are you going to guide those Allah who Allah misguide and deceive the one who Allah misguide nobody can guide but you just said I am the one who turned away and I agree I turned away from the devil but my by making your statement you admitted that everything written in the Quran is nothing but a fraud. If we go in the Quran, we will find this. Let us show some verses.
chapter 4 verse number 88 one of them are you going to guide those who Allah deceived here the translation look at this translation Allah has a thrown out of the way are you going to guide them here you see that Allah is admitting that he is shaitan for he is the one who throw you away it's not you but your statement saying I turned away Allah is saying are you going to guide the one who Allah turned away and this is why we say Islam is invalid stupid religion it cannot maintain itself for a second in one hand they say something in the other hand they say something else How come Muslims, they say statements, is opposing Islam? The answer is very simple. Garbage in, garbage out. They do not know their book. They do not even know what Islam is about. They defend without knowing. This is why we see someone like Abbas, he say, oh, I was not knowing what the context. You just admitted, I turned away. But Allah, he says, no. Do you want to guide him whom Allah has made go astray? Who made me go astray? Allah. And this is what we mentioned about Al-Qadr in Islam. Islam is a stupid cult. It is Allah who guide. It's Allah who make astray. It's Allah who make you a Muslim. It's Allah who make you a Christian. It's Allah who make you a fornicator. It's Allah who make you a criminal. It's Allah. The biggest criminal is Allah the devil. What Jesus said. Who is the father of all lies? Christians answer me. Who is the father of all lies? What the answer? Satan. And the answer in front of you. Do you want to guide whom Allah, Satan, had made go astray? You cannot do that. And here you see how Islam cult oppose the message and the teaching of Christ. Jesus said, I came for the sick, not for the healthy. That make a lot of sense. He came to heal the sick. Doctor, don't come to somebody's healthy. He don't need you. I came for the sick. Allah make you sick. Actually, there's a verse in the Quran says, فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا Allah, he increased your illness. Your sickness. Do you see it? And there's a disease in their heart. And Allah increases their disease. Do you see it? The devil. It is 180 degree, the opposite of the direction of Christ. Islam is of the devil. Somebody saying, why in Saudi Arabia is the Muslim? My friend, if a woman, she wears shoes in Saudi Arabia without socks, they are arresting her. There's no freedom. Give a freedom in order to know who is really a Muslim, who is not. Give a freedom to people. No freedom, you do not know. Freedom. Freedom will tell you who is a gay, who is a lesbian. Freedom will tell you who like to fornicate, who don't like. Freedom tell you who can do drugs, who will not do drugs. Give a freedom. Do you understand? If no freedom, no choice. Then how we can say they are Muslims? According to a doctor, and I made a video about it many years ago, from Saudi Arabia, a Muslim woman, she said 45% of the population of the city of Jeddah are homosexual. And they have even relationship with their own family member. 45%, not 5%, not 10%, just give a freedom. Freedom. No freedom, you will not know who is even Christian. If we force everybody to go to the church, how you know who's a Christian? Freedom. 
in USA, many they are fighting Christianity, but our church is, is over flooded. Actually, ask anyone, if your house is close to a church, your house price is lower than other houses. Why? Because it's very crowded in Saturday and Sunday and Friday and even Wednesday. Like Wednesday, they do a Bible study for women or Thursday. When the weekend come, there's no space for cars. They park their cars all over because the, the parking spot of the church will not fit. Freedom. Freedom will tell you really who is a Muslim who is not. When you live in Pakistan, who dare not to go to pray? Just yesterday, they killed the guy who insulted Allah in the court. They took him to court. Imagine, they are taking him to court for what? For blasphemy against God, which is Allah in this case. They killed him inside the court. And what does that mean? That means anyone he do the same in the future, we will do that to you. So who dare to insult Allah now? You know what I mean? Let me see if I can find any news. <clears throat> They went inside the car court and they shot him in, and the police obviously they allow that and actually this guy i'm sure the guy who did kill this person he is a hero for those cowards do you see it terrorist religion the only way to keep islam functioning exists is terrorism The followers are the same as the Prophet, who he said, I've been victorious by terror from a distance of one month journey. Are we terrified if Jesus is a one month journey from us? Or children and everybody will go out waiting for the Messiah to come. What kind of a man, he say, I've been victorious by terror from a distance of one month journey. See, all of those are authentic statement of Muhammad. One month journey. I've been victorious by terror. Muhammad here is counting. Allah made me victorious by awi, terror, by frightening my enemy from a distance of one month journey. The, the earth was made for me. See, he want to take over the earth. By the way, it doesn't say for me and my Pharaoh. It says for me, Muhammad, you own the whole earth. His name is Muhammad Ziko, but we locked off as uh, his guy right now. And actually, okay, let us do that. We will take one Muhammad as long as somebody want to call. But I'm afraid if I go, he will not call. <coughs> All right. Text me, Mr. Zico, Muhammad Zico. <coughs> I will give you three minutes to text me. If you don't, that's when you are playing games. Text me, Zico. Mostly he heard that I logged off of Skype and now he claimed he want to call me. But I don't think he will call. Muslims, they knew their size. They don't call. 
<clears throat> Muslims are afraid from me from one the distance of one month journey, not because I'm a terrorist, but because I have a brain bigger than their God, a month journey bigger. Where are you, Zico? We are waiting. Somebody saying you guys still hate. I find it very funny and very stupid when a Muslim he speak about hate. Their their prophet ordered to kill us, slaughter us, rape our women, and they are talking about hate. Their Quran says Allah will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians until Judgment Day, and yet they accuse us of hate. This is the act of a whore. You know when a whore she claimed that she is decent. So when a Muslim he say you still hate, you still do hate. That is an act of a whore. A whore who don't have anything to claim. She accuse us of what she have. Do you still hate? Who is talking about hate? You are following the God of hate. My Jesus, my Lord Jesus, he said, love your enemy. We are the one who hate. You are the one who steal our churches. Just this today. You Muslims are praying in our holy church, Ayah Sophia. Is that hate or love? But it's not their fault. Muslims, they use the liberals. Liberals, they use the Muslims. And the propaganda and the agenda is one, the devil. This is why they partner together. You will notice that there is an amazing partnership between liberals and Muslims but Muslims want to kill gays and lesbians Muslims want to kill anyone who is not a Muslim how liberals how the feminist how the gay how the LGBT whatever they call themselves they assign side by side with Muslims does it make sense no it makes sense We are against hatred. We are against racism. So why you are siding with Muslims? This is the Quran. They believe that Allah will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians. They believe that Jewish and Christians and non-Muslims are pigs and monkeys. They believe that they are animals. They have a sign in Mecca that says Muslims only. No go zoom. For non-Muslims are dirty. Chapter 9 verse 28. How you side with this? Quran says, beat your wife. How you side with this? Chapter 4, verse number 34. They side with it. Hypocrites. It's just to uh, reach into agenda. They are willing to compromise together, sleep in the bed. Joe Biden, he made a, a conversation or let us say a statement to Muslims saying to them that the prophet, he says, if one of you, he saw something not right, fix him by his hand. He's asking the Muslims to kill us. The faith he Joe Biden. This is what the hadith says. Kill them. Fix it by your hand. You coward. He is asking every single Muslim to kill the American. Because you just said, fix it by your hand. And what is fixing by your hand? All Islam is about anyone who don't worship Allah, we have to fix it by our hand. That's why the Muhammad says, I've been victorious by terror. He is fixing it by his hand. Imagine if after four months from now we have a president like joe biden and by the way <clears throat> this is a sign of how stupid a huge number of american is i mean regardless if you are democrat or republican from all the 300 millions you could not find somebody except joe Biden. me the guy don't even remember his his, his son name he forgot his wife's name. I mean, this is the only guy. <laughs> oh, 
honestly, in this country is suffering from something weird. So this potato, I think a Muslim, he told him to, uh, to recite this hadith. But he didn't know by reciting this, he just asked Muslims to kill every single American. I heard the Messenger of Allah saying, He who among, among you who sees something against Allah teaching, should modify it with his, the help of his hand. If he could not do it by his hand, then by his tongue. If he could not do it by tongue, then in his heart, which means being a coward. He was quoting this. And you are asking the Muslim to correct what in America exactly? What, is, what, is that, what does that mean? What the Muslims will correct? Let, let them correct what is in their country first. If their countries are good and they can correct it, they will not be in America anyway. If I think Biden will win, will be against Christians, my friend, the Democratic Party is Antichrist Party. Doesn't matter who wins. If you are a Christian, and actually even if you are a Muslim who believe, they claim to believe in God. You see here the hypocrisy. Muslim, they claim that they follow Muhammad and they obey Muhammad. How you vote for somebody who support gays and lesbian and homosexuality, abortion? Do you notice the hypocrisy of this cult Islam? Hypocrites. This is what the Democrats stand for. Everyone knows that. It's not a secret. The one who is against abortion is the Christians. The Muslims, they voted for Obama. Obama, he is the one who signed abortion law. Why you vote for him? He's an ex-Muslim. How you vote for him? Right? If you are a Christian, you should not ever consider the Democratic Party. You see, I don't support the Republican because they are the best. But, I mean, we have, let us say, two ugly. One of them is better than the other one. But the Republican full of garbage too. But we cannot compare. So if you are a Christian, like if you claim to be a Catholic, how you are a Catholic and you vote for Democrat? How dare you? Is that what the church te teach you? Do the church says to you, support those who do abortion, killing babies? How you can be a Protestant and you vote for Democrat? How you can be Orthodox and you vote for Democrat? How you can be Christian in any way, any, any sect you imagine, and you vote for Democrat? Those who vote for Democrat, they betray Jesus. They are fake Christians. I remember once when I went for election, in the election day, the woman, she asked me, like, you know, you, you said you are Democrat or Republican. So anyway, she, uh, she said to me, so where are you from? I said, I'm an Arab. She said, oh, usually they vote for Democrat. I said, I'm not stupid. You should see what happened to her face. She was Democrat. <laughs> she said, usually they vote for Democrat. You know, when, when you come to USA, they tell you, the, the immigrant, you should vote for Democrat, Democrat, you know, because Democrat is the one who support giving you papers easy, citizenship easy. I don't want that, actually. We don't want to get papers easy. We want the good citizen to come to this country. I don't want it to happen to me. I don't want it to happen to anyone. Those people, they are out of their mind just to take over and control the country. They don't care for borders. Drugs is coming, cartel is coming, weapon is coming, kidnapping. If you go and see all the borders with, with, the, with, the, with Mexico, this is the, the worst place to live. Mexican people are wonderful people, but we cannot deny that there's a lot of criminals there too. Nobody can deny that. In some areas in, 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 in Mexico, the cartel are the one in control. Not the government. Government, they have no even one single police there. 
This is what they want for us. They want us to be the same as Pakistan. Uh, we have a Muslim. Okay. Hello? 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 Yes, Mr. Ibrahim, how are you? Yes, I am with you, my friend. You are live on air. What do you like to say to us? Go ahead. Ha. There's no that I'm able to speak with you today. No problem. Well, uh, actually, my name is uh, Zico. Oh, you are Zico? Okay, Mr. Zico. So what do you like to say to us? Yeah, I'm originally from uh, Ghana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Greater to folks. I'm here in France. All right. I uh, uh, watch your program day in day out with my family. Mm -hmm. My, uh, sorry if I can give you a little bit of my background concerning what is going on now. No problem. This is your issue. It's alright. Uh, my family, me and my family, I was brought up in a in a Muslim uh, family. My parents, they are all really really religious concerning this Muslim issue. Alright. Well, when I came to France. That is where uh, I hook up with your uh, program and start to see difference. So very luckily, uh, I travel home back to Ghana. That was last year. Uh, when I was at home, I opened your Skype, your program, I hook up with your program. Because I want my parents to uh, join me with the program. Okay. So very lucky you were on air. We were watching you because they understand English. I was so happy. And as the program was going on, my father was asking me to shut it down, shut it down, say no, daddy, you just need to list it. Because uh, I don't want to be the one that will uh, leave the uh, family and, and uh, deny the religion. I know it will be very tough for me, but I just wanted to understand what I'm cooking in my mind. Because your program has really done a lot in my life. So because of that, I want them to be aware of it. And I want them to know the path I'm taking. So eventually, my, my mom that listened, but my father didn't want to listen to your program. So after some time, beginning to see my mom that he come to me, we say, I want to listen to that. Many times, so they let me know. True, true, my mother started listening to your program. And from there, it started con convincing my dad. Do you believe last year, Ramadan, we didn't do it because of your program? Okay. There was war in the house. Everybody was not thinking because I was, I came in the family of three brothers and two sisters. And that Ramadan period, everyone was at home. Thinking we are going to celebrate Ramadan. Every, the whole thing now looks confusing. Because when we begin to think out all that you are saying, we will go and research it. The more you say it, everyone will handle pen, handle book, we'll be writing it down. After your program, we go for research. We now begin to find out that there are things we didn't even know that was going on in Islam. There are things the, the imam, they didn't tell us. And most especially, it's like there was a veil covering our eyes. So in that period, there was really war in my family. My father didn't want to, when he found out that things were not going this way, and he found out that, I believe he found out the truth. He was really angry. There was no Ramadan in the house, no fasting, nothing, nothing. The house now become the chaos. But I thank God, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, my mother now called my father. This is after about a month later. My father now called my mother called my father is sitting down. He said, I'm beginning to see some truth in what we are in, in, in this mouth's world. You can search it at yourself and be, you can see what is going on now. That we are be following a blind God, at which we were taught like this. We didn't know all these things, they are in the Hadith, they are in the Quran. But we just recite Quran, we know Quran, we are brought up, in, we are born into the family, 
That is all we know. So from there, my father and I begin to initiate and return to apostate. Not just the two. Until now, he's still an apostate. He don't want to go to church. So I told my mother, I said, I want us to, I want us to start. Let's try Jesus. Let's try Jesus. We know him as an Isa in the Quran. We know how he come about everything. Now let's try. Let's try Jesus. The, the one they are calling Jesus is like it's not the see Isa they are, we are calling in the Quran because we can see a very big difference with the way this man is describing it. Let's try Jesus. My mother took phone and began to call my brothers and call my sister and told them that he want to she want to change religion. Everybody was surprised. So uh, I don't need to go too far, but all I want to tell you, there are things that are going on behind you, but you don't know. You are winning a lot of souls. You are saving people from the court of Mohammed. It's not everybody will come online to come and tell you, see what you have done, but I just want to use this opportunity to tell you, thank you. Thank you very much. And I believe one day my father will still join us. Thank you so much. All right, my friend, I'm so happy that's you and your. So let, let me uh, make it uh, try to ex understand. L did your family now accept the Christ or only you? Yeah, my, me and my mother, we have accepted Christ, but I don't know about my brothers. But I told, according yeah. to, I, to my father, and I an apostate. He's not going to, uh, he's no longer part of Islam, but he don't want to come to church. So, but I believe with time he will come. But according to the rest of my brothers and sisters, I believe with time, if my father converts, I believe those ones will, will join too, I believe. All right. Well, I'm happy. I'm happy that I was able to help you and your family, and I'm so glad uh, to do so. I wish I speak French so I can make a program in French to bring more and more people from your country. Some but, people are really eager here in France to hear from you, but because of the language, they cannot get it. I will try to use French to interpret to them. You know. You know, I have because a. I was when, you know, I have a book in French, right? Language. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. called The Secret, you The know. Prophet Arab, which is a very, very good book for those who speak French language. Yeah. Thank you so much. I don't want to take well, your time, but I just want to tell you, to let you know that you are doing a lot of job. Every time you come on air, you are doing a very, very secret job, but you don't know. There are people going out, going out of Islam. Islam is dying systematically. You can only see the surface. That it is like it's big, but inner, deep inner heart is going. Thank you so much. You're welcome, my friend. Thank you for your uh, Say hello to your family from me, and we are happy that they accepted Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. And uh, yeah. then I, I want you now to bring me more people so they can hear and listen, so they can leave too, and they can join the truth, and the truth will set them free. Thank you so much. Take care. God bless. Bye. Well, I thought he's a Muslim, but he's not. You know, we get excited if we see a Muslim trying to call. Uh, I'm so happy. You see what, you know, like you don't know who is listening. You don't know who is changing. You don't know who is accepting the Messiah. We do our work and the Lord, he opened the heart of people by after we showed them the truth and the truth will set them free you see the truth will set you free the truth is the messiah but doesn't mean the truth is not every truth around us every truth around us will make us people who have eyes to see the truth my friend some people don't want to see the truth because the truth can hurt them they are used to something you know, I wake up in the morning, I do prayer to the moon God, bow down, thinking that he is the true God all my life. And then you are showing me that the Quran is stupid and Muhammad is a fraud. That hurt. That will make me angry. But it is the truth. The truth will set you free. So I want to say thank you all for being here. Uh, we have a thousand two hundred people listening right now, but I wish we can continue 
uh, leave a comment in the text down there, not in the chat later, uh, about what you heard, if you are a Muslim, and ask yourself if you are a Muslim, why the scholars don't call Christian Prince and get him busted, live on air. If our brother here, Zico, I thought he's a Muslim because his name is Muhammad Zico, I thought. So if he can call me, they can call me. My Skype is open. I never heard uh, this person before. I don't know about him. So they can call me. My Skype is open for anyone. Why they don't call me to save you? Because they notice that a lot of people leave in Islam because of what I do. So why they don't call me? The answer is very simple. They knew they cannot make it. They will call somebody, they can play games with him. They will debate somebody who cannot debate them only. Or let us say a person who doesn't have the knowledge, neither the skills. Because, by the way, debating a Muslim need the skills. Why? It's like doing a skiing when you debate a Muslim. Like catch me, you know, in the ski over the snow. They use the ice method. So catch me if you can. They don't debate. But you cannot do that with me. I will catch you, you are in the ice, you are in the oil. It doesn't matter where you are, you will be catched. And because of that, they will never do it. We have our other channel for those who like to join us. It's called the quality of life. And mostly we'll go in the weekend there, maybe tomorrow or the day after. So uh, the admin is posting the, um, uh, posting the link for the other channel. Please subscribe there uh, and join us if you care to be part of our program. In that channel, we don't speak about Islam. We speak about different topics. You can watch the videos there and you can post for me a comment uh, about topic you'd like me to speak about in that channel. We are happy for our friend who called us now. You know, you made my day because I don't feel good if a day is gone and I didn't hear that somebody here at Islam and he accepted the Messiah. So thank you for calling Zico. We appreciate you. And I hope soon we will get some Muslims to call us and debate us and see a real debate, a real, a person who have knowledge. Until now, we see that those people who debate, they don't have any kind of knowledge. Actually, there was a video, I thought it's made by a Muslim, but then when I click at it, uh, Because the title was saying uh, a Christian prince exposing Christian prince lies. You know, I thought the video is made by a Muslim. You know, but this is how what happened. This is why they don't want to call, because what they claim, even the one who of them he get excited, he think I'm lying, he find himself not accurate. It was the opposite. Hello, my friend. How are you? Hello. Hello, hello. Talk. Yeah, just like how are you didn't pick up my call. Well, we took your call first time. You did not answer. So we thought maybe you are joking. So what do you want to say to us, Mr. Farouz? So let me let me first expose your lies, OK? OK. You are using you are using fake hadith. Which one is that fake hadith? Is why, which uh, one? Which one? No, which one is fake hadith? Please, if you if you don't mind, help me. Which one of the hadith I use? It was fake. Uh, no, listen, listen to me first. I'm listening, uh, listening. No, no, I'm listening, brother. I'm listening, brother. I'm listening. Which hadith I said it was fake because you just said something. You need to prove it. I'm giving you a chance to talk to me. You know, there's long line of Abdul. They want to call me too. So I need you, you to help me because maybe there's a fake hadith and maybe I do not know and you are, you are the ustad, you are the sheikh, you are the one who knows, we do not know, we want to learn from you. So which hadith I showed in the screen was fake? Listen, listen to me first of all. I'm listening, listening to you, this is the problem, I'm listening to you but you are not listening to me. Which hadith I showed in the screen was fake hadith, otherwise you have to apologize for being a liar. So either you show me the fake hadith I showed you, or you up. Okay, you see here, you notice how I go tough on Muslims. I really go tough. You can't tell, right? But this is to make them wake up. And this guy later, he became a Christian. Actually, I didn't know that this is Fairuz. And now 
I click on it, it's, uh, this is Farouz. So this guy later, he became a Christian. So he called me to call me liar. I'm lying. I'm quoting fake hadith. It's not a true. This is false. You are lying. Right? And then later he became a Christian. So this is what happened when they find the truth, the decent one of them, the one who cannot take it no more, the decent. You know, the decent he suffer. And this guy was suffering. This, what this question prince is showing on screen this can't be true there's no way the prophet he said that the way the quran says that it's impossible so the decent one of them he suffer and the second he starts suffer suffering he go in denial he rejected he cannot be true i mean this is not true there's no way the prophet he would do that so uh, this is the the video it's called Exposing CP Lies, May 2020. Um, I can give you the link. You can watch it later and see the rest of the conversation, which is kind of funny. Uh, but we go tough on Muslims, not because we are against them. We are trying to help you. I'm a person who stands firmly with the truth. I don't take a side. I don't care if you are my brother from my family, my cousin from my blood, or you are from Pakistan. It's the same. You say a lie, I'm against you. You say a truth, I am with you. A Muslim who defend Muhammad by saying truth, I respect him. But I never met one. I never met one. You remember the, the debate we have uh, between Sam Shamoon and the guy from Pakistan or from India, Victor, whatever his name. Everything he said from the beginning to the end is a lie. I got him busted in two seconds and we made a video about it. So Muslims always they try their best. And the only way their best work, if you do the format of debate like the one David Wood, he do. We're 15 minutes for this guy, 15 minutes. This, this is useless. The real debate is what you hear. He talk, I talk. Get me busted right now. What do you say? Otherwise, if I give him 10 minutes, he will say blah, 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 blah. And now I will say blah, 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 blah. And then nobody corner anyone. Never do this kind of debate. For this is not a debate. This is two people reading their, their, uh, the, their preset or pre-statement written a week uh, uh, before the debate. This is why they want to set a time set a time why because none of them is a scholar none of them he know what he's talking about set a time so we can go and print all the reference we want to speak about from the internet a person who have knowledge he go live call me now i don't know even what you will say we did not set time we did not set topic we did not set anything how you how i will know what you will say to me i don't know They set time and they set a topic. And when you give them the topic, they don't talk about the topic. <laughs> anyway, I want to say thank you guys for being here. We appreciate all those people who download my videos and spread them all over. And as you see, our videos go everywhere. If you speak a French, translate to French. If you speak uh, any language, translate your language. Uh, we need the truth to, to be spread. It. And there's millions of people who do not speak English. There's a lot, billions actually, who do not speak English. So we need your help uh, to translate, add subtitle. Uh, those who can translate my books, contact me. We need more languages. We, we have already many languages, but we need more and more to be translated. And again, I appreciate those who support us in Patreon. Uh, your help is always needed, but we are here for everybody, for the poor, for the rich, and our service is for free. Our service is for free, totally for free. The Lord love those who give, and we give. We give our life, we give our knowledge, and we share the truth, which we earn from the Lord. The Lord, he says, for a free you took, for a free you give. And this is why what I do is for free, for everybody. I want to say thank you again. May the Lord bless you. We might go live on air tomorrow in the Quality of Life account. Join us there if you are interested. 
different topics have nothing to do with Islam and everybody is welcome. Christ is Lord and Islam is false. See you soon again. Take care.